Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Worst Effing Gamer. I'm back with a epic summoners video here for you guys. And today we're going to be breaking down some of the best heroes in the game by faction. All right, I'm gonna give you guys two, maybe three heroes in each of the factions that you should be working on at this early stage of the game. It's still early. There are not that many heroes to choose from, but this could save you some money, guys, if it's done right. Because if you waste a lot of resources on a hero that might not be as good as somebody else. You will regret it for now, but uh, let's just go ahead right into this, guys, and let's begin with some of my favorite heroes and some of the best heroes in the Elements faction, okay? All right, and the first hero I want to talk about in the Element faction is Death Cloak. Death Cloak is actually a really sick hero. This guy is a warrior. He's a tank. He's one of the best tanks in the game, especially if you pair him up with a lot of heroes that also uh, benefit from bleed because uh, his abilities allow you to cast bleed on your opponent and uh, it will benefit you a lot to pair him up with a bleed team but let's just go ahead and break down his ultimate deals 60% damage to all enemies and causes them to bleed for two rounds and deals 75% damage per round so He's gonna give everybody bleed. Now, 60% damage is not a lot. It's a little bit of damage, but like I said before, his specialty is to make your opponents bleed. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the episode, but let's keep going on with his abilities here. Uh, passive ability next is uh, increase HP. Then the third ability is each attack causes the enemy to bleed for two rounds, dealing 40% damage. So another bleed ability that we're talking about here. And then his final and fourth ability is uh, deals 150% damage to bleeding enemies. So it all comes full, full circle right now, guys. Uh, he's all about bleeding your enemies and then dealing slow damage as the battle goes on, all right? Uh, good thing about him is he is one of the best heroes in the game health wise i mean he's got some of the highest health in the game i think he's second in the game in health so that's really good and he can definitely take a lot of damage right so death cloak is one of the best element heroes in the game the next element hero that i want to talk about is hydra hydra is a ranger this hero is actually really really sick guys because he gets better as the battle goes on uh, his ultimate here will deal a lot of damage to multiple heroes here as you can see it deals 200 damage to an enemy and And the two enemies to its rear. This is common in uh, epic summoners People getting hit and then the people behind them getting hit as well Like what the hell did they ever do just just be at the wrong place at the wrong time that kind of sucks but increase and increases the hero's attack by 20% for two rounds. So when you use his ultimate, he will have 20% extra damage for two rounds. Uh, that's actually really, really sick. It's going to make him even more powerful as the battle goes on. Increase attack for 20% uh, percent dodge by 15%. So this is a cool passive as well. Uh, his third ability is what makes Hydra really, really good though. Each attack increases attack by 15% and dodge by 5% which are stackable all right so this is kind of OP it's what makes him one of the best heroes in the game because the longer that he can stay alive the more damage he will be able to dish out uh, because this ability will stack further and further and uh, he's able to hit multiple heroes with his ultimate like you said like you saw before so that's what really makes him really really good it's his third ability here and then for his fourth ability, change normal attacks to deal 75% damage to uh, two random enemies. That's pretty sick because instead of hitting just one, he's, now he hits even more enemies. And then his attack powers keeps getting increased. So overall, as you can see, it's kind of really sick. Hydro is one of the best heroes in the game. So if you're going rainbow, I highly recommend that Hydra might be one of the heroes that you're working on for the element faction. All right, so moving on to the dark faction here, guys. We're gonna talk about the nine-headed dragon. Uh, what the hell? There's only six heads there. How the hell is he called the nine-headed dragon? Unless my eyes have been shot, I only see six heads. I'm guessing, I am guessing as you, s maybe in the future they have plans on growing more heads as you star them higher, maybe? That's kind of what they're hiding, but for now, even with six heads, this dude is a beast. One of, maybe if not the best hero in the game to destroy backliners, all right? This guy is a black liner killer. Uh, 205 damage to a backline enemy, so anything over 200%, guys, is sick. So just keep that in mind. Anybody that deals over 200% damage to anybody, that's really, really high. 
Uh, if the enemy is an assassin, there is a 50% chance to stun. So great against assassins right there, but he doesn't even need that extra bonus because 205 to all backline enemies is good enough. For, uh, for the nine-headed dragon here. And uh, he reminds me a lot of Hydra, as you can see. They're both very identical. All have heads and they're all dragons. So the artwork there was no-brainer. Hey, let's just take Hydra and make him blue and call him nine-headed dragon. Wait a minute, boss. He's only got six heads. Shut the hell up and just do your job and turn him into a nine-headed dragon, you idiot. All right, so his second ability, increased crit by 25%, crit damage by 35%. That's a nice passive ability there. 25 and 35 is a good spread. Now, his third ability is also really, really sick. Change normal attacks to deal 125 damage to a random backline enemy. Again, it, it takes his attacks, and instead of hitting the next available hero in the front, he actually hits the hero in the back. So, um... Like I said, best backliner killer in the game. And then each attack increases the hero's crit damage by 45%. And that is stackable. Uh, a lot of abilities are stackable in this game. Which kind of doesn't make any uh, battles last that long. Because if you can go 3-4 rounds. So every attack that he dishes out is going to increase his crit damage by 45%. So the next time he gets a crit, it's game over. Whoever he hits is dead meat. There's no... There's no way they're surviving. So that's kind of why the Nine-Headed Dragon is really powerful. If you are struggling to kill some backliners, you might think about putting Nine-Headed Dragon on your team. The next hero that we're going to talk about is the Night Daughter. The Night Daughter is a beast. She's widely renowned as probably the best hero in the game, guys, because some of her abilities are insane. They're really, really good. Let's break her down really quickly right now. So her ultimate deals 250 damage to an enemy and the enemies to the rear and it's a must hit so she cannot miss that's really good right there and second of all 215 damage percent damage is a lot to start off with also hits three enemies presumably it's three if you're gonna hit the first one plus the other two unless you're just at the back line all right now um like i said before this is a common theme in Epic Summoners. You hit one guy, it hits the two heroes in the back. I think that's pretty cool because AoE damage is really good. So if you hit more than one target, it's awesome. So that ultimate already is really, really good. Uh, her second ability is a passive ability that's going to increase her attack by 15% and crit by 25%. That's not that bad. And then uh, let's break down the third ability here. And for this one, when the attack is crit, uh, there is a 65% chance that it ignores enemy armor um now if you can somehow stack her to make her get a lot of crits this is crazy good 65 percent chance is pretty high obviously and uh if you can get a crit she's most likely going to ignore the enemy's armor and that's how it deals a lot a lot of damage and then also her fourth ability is kind of what makes everything kind of full circle uh, because she is the best warrior killer in the game and warriors are typically the tanks of the game and if you are facing night daughter there is no warrior that's going to be able to stand up to her power this one is going to do another 110 percent damage additional to warriors all right so that's kind of what happens she hits an ultimate on a warrior most likely he's dead and the people behind him are screwed just for being there so pretty cool abilities night daughter that's why a lot of people love her, a lot of people are using her, and she is a, a really sweet hero to have. So I recommend that you definitely try to work a Night Daughter into your lineup, guys. She's very helpful. Alright, moving on to the Humans faction, widely renowned as one of the worst factions in the game. These heroes stink, but not so fast. There is a couple of decent heroes in here, so let's not overjudge them right now. So, first off, let's talk about Captain Hook. Uh, Captain Hook is a really good hero. This guy is actually pretty amazing, guys. His ultimate is very, very nice. He deals AoE damage to everybody, dealing 100% damage and 25% chance to petrify them for one round. So, uh, right off the bat, we're starting with the best human hero in the game. Captain Hook is the best. That's kind of it right there. Captain Hook is a beast. You want to have him. If you're going to do a rainbow aura, Captain Hook should be the guy that you're picking from humans. Increases crit by 25%. Crit damage by 30%. Those are nice increases. Anything around 30 is a nice increase. Each attack increases the hero's crit damage by 50, which is stackable. So this is another really, really good ability like we saw before. Every time he attacks, it's going to increase his crit damage. So if he can get a crit... 
It's crazy. And uh, that's why battles don't last that long because everybody's stacking all these crazy abilities and it gets crazy damage. Um, additional 140% damage to the petrified enemy. So, obviously having petrified enemies is great for the stun ability, for the crowd control in an arena battle, but then also he deals more damage to the enemies that he petrifies. So, kind of goes hand in hand. This is why, you know, Captain Hook is a great hero to have. And this is why he's also one of the best rangers in the game. So, that's my opinion on Captain Hook. Alright, so my second favorite human uh, hero is Cleopatra. Cleopatra is kind of similar to Captain Hook. Except she's a little bit different. Now she deals 130% damage to the random three enemies. All right. So instead of doing everybody like Captain Hook, she does three enemies. And it's a little bit more damage. But there is a 35% chance to petrify him for one round. So as Captain Hook is 25% chance, she's got a 35% chance, which is a lot better. But it's only three instead of six. So that's the only difference, right? So very similar and slightly different. Uh, for their ultimates. Now let's break it down the rest of the abilities here. So second uh, ability, every attack has a 25% chance to petrify the enemy for one round. So her and Captain Hook are very similar if you break down the two abilities guys. Very very similar except for slightly differences. So additional 140 damage to petrified enemies. That's very, that's almost identical to Captain Hook as well. And then her fourth ability here, that's the only difference between the two. Uh, Cleopatra, when the hero dies, there's a 25% chance to petrify all enemies for one round. So this is the difference between her. Uh, when she dies, there's a small chance, not a great chance, 25% chance to petrify your whole enemy team, which is pretty sick. Uh, a lot of people use her as a sacrificial lamb, you might say. Put her somewhere early on. Maybe in the back if you're facing uh, nine tail, Nine-Headed Dragon. There's some strategies to go along with that, but... This ability is good and not good. If it works, it's great. If it doesn't work, it's kind of a useless ability. That's my opinion. That's kind of why I put Captain Hook above her. But nonetheless, she is the second best humanoid in the game. And um, that's kind of the only ones that I really want to talk about. Alright guys, so let's talk about the Saints now. Saints are a little bit interesting to talk about because... They're all pretty decent, they're all average, and it's hard to pick which one you really want more than the other ones. Um, if we break down Panda, he's one of you know the better tanks in the game. Uh, it's kind of funny because having Panda on your team, you feel like he always dies, but when you are facing him, you feel like he never dies. It's kind of weird how that feels because he, you kill him once, he regents. Uh, let's just break down his abilities here. Fourth ability... He comes back to life, he re, uh, re, re, is reborn immediately after death with 50% health, so that already is pretty cool right there. And then his ultimate deals 175% uh, damage to the backline enemies and then gains 110 attack percent for the HP, alright? So that's pretty good, that's why he's kind of hard to kill. Um, now he's really good on a dodge team, increases dodge by 20 and uh, his third ability will also, um, each attack, if the enemy dodges, heals him. Alright, now a lot of people stack him on an All Saints team. If you see the auras, they get a 25% dodge. The catch is, there is actually a bunch of heroes that will counter dodging in the game now. You already saw Night Daughter, she, will, she has her ultimate, which is a not... You know, it can't miss ability. We also have the new hero that was just released, the Wind Knight, which I didn't include him in my top two for humanoids, but he's decent, but only against a certain faction. Each attack, if the enemy dodges, increases the hero's crit, which is stackable by 100%. So that's the thing. If you are facing a Wind Knight and you are using your Panda, you're kind of in deep shit. So that's why going all uh, Saints is tricky sometimes. It could work for you or against you depending on who you're facing but overall panda is definitely one of the top tanks in the game so if you have panda make sure you upgrade him and uh, you definitely want to use him the monkey king is also interesting as well guys because he's got some pretty good uh, abilities actually really cool abilities but there's a catch his ultimate is very powerful 275 percent damage is a uh, really a uh, high damage guys to do and it also steals 50 percent attack and crit by 20 percent for two rounds of your opponent now the only catch is he only hits the enemy with the lowest HP so that's kind of tricky because uh, most of the time the enemy that he hits with his ultimate is about to kick rocks anyways he's about to die so he kind of wastes a good really good attack on a, 
a hero that's already about to die, which kind of sucks. But if he gets it off on a hero that's not about to die, it's actually really good. So that's the kind of downside to the Monkey King. But overall, it's a, it's a really good ability, and if you have the Monkey King, it's not bad to have on your team. But he's not a hero that I personally would prioritize above everything else. Uh, attack increase, crit increase as a passive. Um, now, the third ability, every attack steals enemies' fury by 30 points. That's not bad at all, because you can take away their fury, um, and also negating their ultimate, which is kind of okay. And then his fourth ability, uh, change normal attacks to deal 145% damage to the enemy with the lowest HP. Like I said before, he's going to hit enemies that are already very weak. Uh, it's kind of his downside, I guess. If he didn't have that downside, he would be really, really good. Probably the best damage dealer in the game. Um, Monkey King's positioning or Monkey King's usability comes more in handy when you're facing bosses when there's only one single tar you know one single target in the game and he attacks them he's probably going to deal a lot of damage for the arena probably not one of the better heroes but not one of the worst either so he's average so that's that's what I feel about the Monkey King. Now Tauros, uh, on the other hand, is a great mage. This guy is one of the best mages in the game uh, because he provides you with, with a great chance to actually uh, silence your opponents. His ultimate is going to deal a small amount of damage to all enemies on the battlefield, increases the attack for by 30% for one round. If the enemy is a priest, there's a 40% chance to silence them, so that already is pretty good. That's a high percent chance to silence priests, so a priest counter, that's pretty good. Uh, second ability is even better. Every attack has a 40% chance to silence the enemy for one round if the enemy is a priest dealing an additional 35% damage. So this whole, his first two abilities are kind of not weird, but they are very similar. So his ultimate is going to deal a little bit of damage, right? And then they say there's a 40% chance to silence uh, them for one round if it's a priest. Now the second one is an identical ability it's very identical there's a 40% chance to silence every enemy you know the enemy that he attacks but that negates the bonus from this first ability so it's kind of weird you know what I'm saying so the 40% chance to silence a priest is kind of negated by this ability because this also is going to give you a 40% chance to silence um, you know an enemy so th th these two abilities are kind of identical and then if the enemy is a priest, it deals more damage to them. So that's the only difference. Um, but having that silence is pretty good. Increase skill damage by 25%. That's good. That's really good. And HP by 15%. So skill damage increase is really nice. And then change normal attack to deal 90% damage to two random enemies. Now this is pretty good because it's going to hit two random enemies. Thus upgrading the second ability. You know what I mean? You have a better chance to silence more enemies all right so that's why it's pretty good and a lot of people use them on their team for the silence crowd control is always good in any meta game you know arena battling crowd control always helps now he won't be able to deal a lot of damage versus bosses but he will help you out in your arena battles now moving on to the dragon hunter now dragon hunter is your poor man's night daughter all right she's literally the poor man's night daughter she's not as good as the night daughter but she is a pretty good replacement if you don't have her. So it deals 165% damage to the enemy and the two enemies to the rear, just like Night Daughter's ability. Uh, except Night Daughter's is a must miss, and Dragon Slayer is different because it causes the enemy to bleed for two rounds, dealing 75% damage. Now, as I was talking before about the Death Cloak, uh, she goes hand in hand with Death Cloak, alright, guys? She also will bleed your opponents. So two enemies that will bleed, that's actually really good. If you pair her up with Death, Death Cloak, that's a good combo right there. Uh, these are her passive bonuses. And then her third ability here is going to every attack. If critted, the enemy will bleed for two rounds, dealing 175% damage. So if she gets a crit, more bleeding for your opponent. That's always, uh, you know, really, really good. And then a fourth ability, whenever an enemy dies, increases the hero's crit by 30%, which is stackable. Now, this is good because the longer she can last, the higher chance she's going to have to crit, which further enhances her third ability, you know what I'm saying, which makes everybody bleed. So the more crits you get, more bleed, and this bleed does a lot of damage. 175% damage is a lot. So her and Deathcloak are really good pairing in the game right now. All right, guys, so moving on to the dungeon faction now. There's only two choices that you have here right now, so your choices are kind of not that hard. You have a, uh, a tank, and you're going to have a priest. 
two choices depending on what you want to go with uh now bloody hand is one of the best tanks in the game guys this guy is crazy with the crowd control he's got some of the best crowd control abilities in the game uh deal 175 percent damage to an enemy and two enemies to its rear and has a 30 percent chance to stun the enemy for one round that's really good right there already is stunned with his ultimate that always helps you out second ability increases hp that's always nice you know for a tank third ability each attack if the enemy dodged the hero will launch a must-hit attack dealing 180% damage and has a 55% chance to stun the enemy for one round. So like I said before, another great counter to the dodge teams. You know what I mean? They have the dodge, the dodge teams can be very OP, except for the fact that the developers have created uh, you know, a lot of counters to them as well. So this guy is one of the best counters to the dodge because if they if he misses, you do not want bloody hand. To miss against you, alright? Because then he's going to launch a crazy attack. And there's a good chance he's going to stun your hero. So that's not good. <laughs> Make sure you don't miss. Fourth ability for Bloody Hand. Deals 140 extra uh, percent damage to stunning enemies. So, pairing him up on a crowd control team with stuns is great for him. Obviously, it does more damage if the hero is stunned. It kind of goes really good with his first ability, alright? So, that's his whole theme in the game, guys. Stun. A warrior that can stun now moving on to the next dungeon hero oblivion dragon oblivion dragon is actually pretty cool it's uh very nice to have uh deals 100 damage to all enemies and has a 20 percent chance to petrify the enemy for one round and gain some hp so 20 percent chance is not great but he's hitting everybody so you have one i guess out of five chance to hit somebody which is nice and i mean to petrify somebody which is pretty good and then he gets some hp back that's always really helpful uh, second ability is passive, 30% uh, attack increase and hit by 15. Uh, the third ability is really, really good here because each attack reduces enemy attack by 30% for two rounds. This is the Oblivion Dragon whole claim to fame because this ability is very, very nice, guys. Reduced uh, attack by 30% for two rounds. That's deadly. That can really, really hurt. Change the tide of a battle a lot of times because uh, when the battle is really tight and uh, one... You know, debuff in the game can make a huge difference. He is the only hero in the game with this ability. That's why it makes him really unique. So, if you have to choose between these two, and you can go with Bloody Hand, which is a great tank, like I said before. Or if you go with Oblivion Dragon, he's a really, really good debuffer in the game as well. So, take your pick on who you want to go with. Those are the, difference, the differences between the two. This fourth ability is not that great, but it's there, so we have to talk about it. When HP is less than 30%, heals all heroes. 40% attack it's not that great it's a one-time thing which is okay but like I said before his claim to fame is this debuff 30% reduction of attack that's really nice and uh, you know a lot of teams can definitely use that all right guys so for the last faction it's kind of exactly like the dungeon faction for the fact that we only have two choices in here so let's break them down you have the tree dozer let's so the tree dozer we'll talk about him first here so tree dozer I actually like he's actually really really good and it goes great if you're trying to stack that bleed team like i've been talking about deals 115 damage to all enemies and causes the enemy to bleed for two rounds dealing 35 percent damage per round not a lot 35 percent but like i said uh, it's very very nice on a bleed team another hero that casts bleed uh, second ability is a passive ability that increases 35% attack third ability is pretty good every attack that he does the enemy will permanently bleed dealing 35% damage per round so this guy will cast a permanent bleed that's very nice he's the only one in the game that can do that I'm pretty sure so that's kind of what makes him really really good and then fourth ability with the HP is less than 50% uh, increase the hero's dodge by 30 and attack by 30 for three rounds that's really nice unless like i said before you're you're facing heroes that are great against dodging so it kind of could go both ways but like i said any increases in stats can always help so this is tree dozer guys he's a bleed hero if you're trying to get a bleed team going he's one of the better heroes to have but the only thing is, he's kind of hard to get because he's in a faction that doesn't really drop that often. So you kind of have to uh, be patient with him. All right. And the last hero I'm going to talk about is the Inventor. Inventor is uh, not a bad hero as well. He's pretty cool. Hard to get, like I said before. But let's take a look at his abilities. Deals 205 damage to random enemies, which is good. And reduces the enemy's hit by 20%. For two rounds um that's pretty good and 205 percent damage is pretty nice to two random enemies 
Uh, second ability here. Every attack has a 45% chance to deal 100 additional damage and also has a chance to reduce the enemy's hit by 20%. So this guy is great at reducing hit. Third ability is passive. Increase attack by 25% and uh, hit by 15%. And his last ability after the release of the skill has a 25% 25% chance to recover all of the fury which will which will allow him to cast another ultimate. So that's always a bonus to have. Really, really nice. Seems like just a lot of damage and reducing hit so so adventure is pretty cool to have and if you have a choice between which one to go with personally i like the tree dozer because of all the bleed abilities but uh inventor is actually not bad don't sleep on him he deals a good amount, a lot of damage and reducing hit is always nice guys so what's more to say all right guys so that about wraps it up for my video on some of the best heroes in the game of epic summoners uh, i hope you enjoy that guys be sure to support the video leave a like uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will catch you guys on the next Epic Summoners video. So then, have a good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Peace out, everybody.